everybody, I'm Dana Keel. She said that. Like, I look in a room like this, and it's very diverse. I think I'm probably the only Gen Xer, like, in here. I'm not the only African-American woman, but the only Gen Xer, which would make me the Oracle from The Matrix. <laughs> Woo! So, you guys, we're out, right? I see some masks, and I see some not, but you guys, the sign that we're really out is, like, Target. Who's been to Target, like, really, really? Like, I know we were always going, right? But the thing is, now there are no limits. Remember, you could only buy two alcohols, two toilet tissues, like two antibacterial wipes, right, right? So we're out. I went in the other day, and I bought three alcohols. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, take that, Target, take that. You guys, and of course, people have been flying, but people are flying more. Like, who flies Delta? I'm flying Delta in a couple weeks, right, right? But you guys, in the news, there were a couple scuffles on Delta flights. I don't know if y'all watched the news, but there were a couple of folks that they had to, like, stop the plane and then take them off. The last person was a Delta employee, right? And I was like, not enough Sky Miles? Like, <laughs> what happened? You guys, a couple of more things. I've been driving around lately, and I heard a commercial on the radio. It was very interesting. And it said, anxiety, depression the vax, racism causing you mental health problems? <laughs> we'll call the LA Department of Mental Health. And I was like, so it took a pandemic for y'all to know that racism causes mental health problems? <laughs> Thank you, pandemic. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Y'all know, you know, they convicted an officer of killing an unarmed black man a month or so ago, right? Right? Thank you, pandemic. Thank you. <laughs> right, you guys, right? And to my ladies, I know a lot of us during the Zoom days, like we gave up bras, but now bras are back, bralettes are back, right? Thank you, pandemic. Thank you. <laughs> I'm more of what you call a fandemic. Now, who gained those pounds? That quarantine 15, quarantine 17, quarantine 19, quarantine 20? Let me just say this. I saw an article for all of us. It said, coconut oil, chia seeds, avocado, foods that fight fat. I was like, but are y'all winning? <laughs> are y'all winning the fight against fat? Are chia seeds really the warriors we thought they were? Is that what's going down? You guys, a couple of things. Like, I am at the door of menopause. This is the black, black, don't crack version, but menopause nonetheless. And there's a few things that come with menopause. There are several M's. The first M is mood swings. Like you're just up one minute, down the next. Like one minute you're like, what becomes of the broken hearted? And the next minute you are like, I will survive. I will survive. Hey, hey. Now there's proof that I'm a Gen Xer. Who knows that song? Who even knows I will survive, right? Right, right. Couple of more things, y'all, like memory loss. Like you cannot remember shit. Like if you can remember Mary J, then you'll forget Method. Like you can't like keep it all together, right? And that's one of my favorite songs. I see y'all laughing. It's one of my favorite songs. But it's like, my childhood was perfect. I never got a spanking. Wink, wink. Um, I have no daddy issues, which is why I'm still single. Um, so <laughs> your memory is for garbage. Now, I am single, right? And I am a woman over a certain age, as they say, right? And so what it means is that I'm in no committed relationships, but in menopause, you are in one and that is with your calories, right? Your metabolism slows all the way down. I'm, like, I'm, looking, at every, I'm looking at you, pretty girl, right here. Just, I'm sure your metabolism is whip, it's fire. But like once you, once you get here, it's like your calories get committed to your thighs, they get committed to your back, they get committed to your belly. It's like as my ass gets flatter, my stomach gets fatter. Like it is, it is no fun, no fun, no fun. I feel as though I have been like convicted of being lonely, being at the door of menopause. I have a 19 year old son, so I have survived single motherhood. I've survived being a baby mama, right? And it, 
it feels a lot like that three strikes legislation, like I'm convicted to a life of loneliness. Like, right, and I'm just saying, leave it to America like to name legislation behind baseball, three strikes. Like, where are they doing that at around the world? I'm just saying, just saying. It is hard, and again, we got that check on the justice system, but it is still hard for African Americans and people of color to trust the justice system, right? Right, right, thank you, thank you. And let me tell you why. Because the American legal system is a lot like the Bible. A lot of good ideas on paper, but just depends on, right, who's explaining it, right? <laughs> you say, love thy neighbor, and then Matt Gates is like, is she 17? Right? <laughs> right? Just saying, just saying, just saying. Now, the thing about being at the door of menopause or being an adult period is adulting itself. Let me just say a couple things. Today, I got a new car. So excited, right? Right? I realized, though, last week as I got on the phone that someone said to me, well, what is your dream car? And I was like, I don't have a dream car, right? Like, at a certain age, you should be actually driving your dream car, I'm just saying. And so my dream was just to get the car that they would let somebody with a 596 credit score and $2,000 down, $2, down get. And today, right? And today, it was a 2018 Kia Soul from CarMax. I'm just saying. <laughs> That is, that is my dream car. Does it have a warranty? Is it covered by insurance? Can I make the payments? Yeah, that's my dream car, just saying. But let's talk about adulting for a minute, y'all. Like, so a couple of things to the men in the audience. Did you guys know that male pattern baldness becomes an issue in your late teens? Did anybody know that? Like, they didn't tell you that. And I think they should, because then you're going to the barber at a certain point trying to figure out comb overs, trying to figure out what's going on. And there's just stuff like that that they should be telling you. And so I've decided that there is a commission. And preceding, before each decade of trouble, we're gonna sign on the dotted line upon getting the information. So here's how it goes. So at nine, you'll have to sign on the dotted line that you know male pattern baldness is an issue. Now, to the ladies. Did you guys know that we have a whole phase in our 20s? <laughs> Let me get some water. Did anybody know that? Like, okay. So, like, all right, first of all, clap ladies if you knew that. Did the ladies know that? All right. Gentlemen, did y'all know that? Oh, okay. <laughs> Let me just say this. I didn't know that we had a whole phase in our 20s. Let me just say that. First, I would have made better use of the time. <laughs> Let me say that. Second, you can't be a hoe over 50. <laughs> and let me tell you why. Because gray hair is gangster. It grays, <laughs> right? It grays up top and it grays everywhere else, if you know what I mean. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Couple of more things. Speaking of credit scores, like who in here, and you don't have to show, raise your hands, but having a good credit score like above, say, a 700 is a good idea. Now, if you've gone to high school, which all of you have, then we knew what to do with ACT scores. We knew what to do with SAT scores. We didn't really know what to do about credit scores. So I'm just saying at 29, sign on the dotted line that a 750 is a good idea. <laughs> you don't have to actually have one, but just know it's a good idea. Right? Just know. Just know. Just know. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Because you're going to want a house. You want, you're going to want to be financed a little lower than 13% on a Kia Soul. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> now, to the ladies, let me speak to y'all. Like, if you, does anybody, is there, are there any moms in the room? Has anybody had, besides me and besides Susie? So it's, there's a couple of things to know about motherhood. And I'm just talking to the ladies. I'm just talking to the ladies. Now, we said that there was a male pattern baldness issue, but ladies, there is a chance that you will lose your edges uh, as, as a part of that. And, like, and I needed a heads up that edges might be an issue. He would still be here, but I just needed to know. I just needed to know. I'm just saying. Now, so I may be the only Gen Xer in here, but let me just say this. It's time to pick a career. If you are 39 or if you are 49, it is time to pick a career. Now, 
I know that Jeff Bezos is divorced. I know that Bill Gates is divorcing. I know that Mark Zuckerberg is also divorcing. But let me just say this. You cannot multi-level market, buy lottery tickets, and hustle everything. And like me, you cannot hope that Jeff Bezos will adopt you. You are, <laughs> you're going to have to pick a career. You're going to have to pick something so that you'll have retirement. All right, you guys, just saying. Now, as we went into the pandemic, before it all happened, I was an essential worker. So I was driving Lyft, I was doing Postmates. And I just wanna to talk to y'all a little bit about it because we are like, Postmates is huge, right? Right, right. So I have a few rules. Like, so if you ever see my face, my name, Dana Keel, uh, come up on your app, let me say a couple things. First of all, don't ask me am I that comedian. Mind your business, that's first. <laughs> Second, rule number one, if you live between the first and the third floor, come on down and get your food, right? Don't have me coming up the stairs. Don't have me trying to find you in that labyrinth of an apartment building you live in, because don't nobody ever live by the stairs. Let me say that, or by the elevator. Second, second, if it takes you two to three text bubbles to tell me where you live, what do y'all think? Come on down, just come on down. If you, if you want your food, just come on down. Now, who gets liquor from Postmates? Anybody in this room? Because you, okay, so then you know what's up. So if you're getting alcohol, it's not a bad thing. She's, she's on point. If you get alcohol from Postmates, a couple of things about it. You have to present ID in order or some type of, you know, either a passport or whatever. So this is my rule, rule number three. Stay on the sidewalk. <laughs> Let me tell you what happened. So I pull up and this young woman, uh, a young Karen, like comes, <laughs> right? <laughs> comes swinging over to my open window, sticks her ID like straight in the window. And I was like, girl, this is not a drug deal. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna need you to get back on the sidewalk and I'm gonna bring you a set of homes right now. <laughs> right? Thank you. <laughs> right? Thank you for being on the sidewalk. Now, rule number four, I don't think anybody in here has teenage kids. But if you don't know your address, rule number four, know your address. <laughs> let, me, let me say this. I don't like driving up to sunset, middle of the night, by the uh, forest with your vegan froyo, because it'll go home with me, right? I will eat your food. Let me, before I finish, let me say that. I will eat your food. Let me say, if I can't, if I can't find you, if I can't get to you, I will eat your food. So if you want your food and you don't want me to eat your food, know your address. Because if I'm up there on Sunset at Will Rogers Park and I can't find you because you live on a private drive, girl, I'm not coming back there. And I'm not finna, she's like, well, can you type? No, I can't type in nothing, like, right? Because right now I am worried that coyotes are gonna drag me out this car and their Freddy Krueger is gonna jump on my hood. So. <laughs> I'm just saying, rule number four, know your address. Know your address. Couple, <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. So also pre-pandemic, like again, that adulting, man, it's nagging, it's tough. And I was just kind of like feeling a little anxious about everything, right? Like I take my son to school every day, but dishes not getting washed, stuff not getting picked up on the floor, from the floor, we ain't filed taxes in a minute. Like it's just a lot of stuff <laughs> that's just not happening. And it got to a point, you guys, where even though I was the Lyft driver, people were counseling me. They were counseling me. <laughs> and this one woman said, you might want to consider cannabis. And I was like, all right, <laughs> okay, and <laughs> thank you, thank you, yes, so y'all know. Now, in these modern times, because I was in college in the 80s and the 90s, all you could do was smoke it, and let me just say this, I couldn't smoke, and I tried, right? <laughs> I had the cool friends, and I wanted to be cool, so they was like puff, puff, pass, and so I tried. My sorority sister snatched the joint from me. She said, we're not wasting good weed on you. <laughs> she, right? She was like, you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're doing. <laughs> so now in these modern times, when you can like cookies, chew and eat gummies, 
it's a time for me to capitalize off of the skills I have, eating, <laughs> eating, right? So I go into this uh, dispensary, and I actually went to two in one day. Um, I go in for my, <laughs> my first visit. There's this wonderful place uh, not far from the Beverly Center. I go in there, beautiful place. Looks like Whole Foods, right? And <laughs> really, like floors, everything. And I explained to the girl, I was like, listen, like I'm just having issues around anxiety. Like I take my son to school, but like I can't get anything else done. I'm like just struggling with everything. And I was like, and I Googled this and I said there are two types of course she knows that I didn't so I was like I know there's indica and there's sativa and I think I'm more of an indica type and she's like maybe so <laughs> there's another salesperson have you ever been shopping and you're talking to one salesperson and another one comes and gets all in the business y'all know so another one at the end of the counter comes down and she says I have multiple personality disorder, and right, right? And you sound like a sativa type. And I was like, I was like, I don't have multiple personalities. I've got two. <laughs> I've got the woman who wants to succeed, and I've got the scary bitch trying to hold her back. That's what I've got. That's what I've got. That's what I've got. And we are here <laughs> to silence the scary bitch. That's what we're here. Right? That's what we're here to do. That's what we're here to do. You guys, I will leave you with this. Like, I just want to say this to my younger generation out here. I'm kind of mad with y'all, right? Because y'all moved the beauty standard. Y'all moved it from like, we were in the 80s and 90s, like we were thinning and waxing our eyebrows. I too wanted to be Rick James' super freak, just saying. <laughs> and now, eyebrows are thick and beautiful and bushy. And I'm just saying like, like I can't make it. Like I don't even know what to do. So I have spent the quarantine like taking every supplement, taking ashwagandha, taking all kind of biotin, everything I can just to get bushy eyebrows. So I'm just saying like I'll leave it right here. You guys right now I am doing physical therapy every day. I'm using the edge control to save these edges on my eyebrows to get them back. You guys, I'm Dana Keel. Thank you so much. This has been a Funny Media Group production.